guys <laughs> welcome back to my channel this is carob spice um this is like the fifth or sixth time i'm attempting to record this video because i'm working with a little bit of distraction abney keeps walking in here and it's driving me nuts because abney is at a place where she's not really listening to mommy so with that said i do have some quiet time to myself um amara is sleeping uh if you're new to my channel Amara is my preemie. Um, she was born at 29 weeks or delivered at 29 weeks. And you can go check out those videos. They're not too far back. And so what I'm doing, I wanted to record this video um, now, not because I'm having some time to myself, but also I wanted to do this while I'm feeling what I'm feeling right now. And so I feel a little bit more stressed today than usual. And that could be because of the series of events that I had this morning. I'm also very much um, sleep deprived. Um, I must say having a baby from NICU, they're so used to being on a certain schedule. So Amara's schedule was um, care or touch time and feed time at three, six, nine, and 12 around the clock. So now that she's home, I'm also trying to keep that up as well. Give or take a half an hour you know, I may fall short here or there with a half an hour, but I'm trying to keep her on that schedule. And it's good. Um, the part that I struggle with the most is the after 12 at night. Because, you know, when you feed a baby, it's not just about feeding them and then you put them to sleep. You have to feed them, burp them. And I hold her upright, as you, as you really should, so that the milk is not coming back up. And so in reality, that whole process is going to take probably an hour. So in reality, she's down in her bassinet at about one. And so I have one o'clock, two o'clock to catch some sleep. And then I'm up again at three and it repeats. So um, even though I'm not a first time mom, it is a different kind of dedication because you do not want your baby to go really long periods of time without feeding, especially a preemie baby. So that is where that kind of commitment comes in but also a different kind of struggle and um you know amara is not breastfed because we have challenges there you know abony was breastfed for two years and um amara on the other hand we're having some challenges there if i think i probably latched her on about five times ever since um it could be due to a number of factors but uh i kind of I don't want to say give up. I am expressing and I'm giving her that milk with bottles, but it could be just latching issues. Um, you know, I want to, it's not as if I don't want to, I've tried. I got a lactation consultant to help me. I got a nipple shield. Um, I did all the things that I could have done, you know, and um, it's just not working out. So I'm kind of letting go of that as well. So, you know, to me, it's easier to just, uh, have the baby there when you're breastfed and or breastfeeding as opposed to having to get up put the bottle in the bottle warmer and all that jazz so anyway um so i'm very much uh sleep deprived so that is what i was the whole backstory was about i'm really really sleep deprived as with any mother um and i think that could be bringing on some issues as well you know there is this thing called mom brain so your lack of sleep of course because you're tired will bring about lack of judgment in certain things not that anything crazy happened but you tend to have this lag um if you're a mom you know exactly what i'm talking about um it's called mom brain and it's really a thing and i think it's probably it could be evolutionary as well because you know you want mothers to focus on the baby and as much as possible and not anything else but hence we tend to lag with other things you know so that that is something i've been struggling as well as well now um at the time of delivery i had a i was diagnosed with atypical preeclampsia so my blood pressure was over 240 um so 240 over um 180 and believe it or not i had friends with the same issues like friends within my circle with the same issues and that has always been my fear like preeclampsia but we're here we're alive because that in itself was another story so i am still on medication for that i'm taking procardia um twice a day 
and um you know i was really apprehensive about meds but i'm really just doing what i need to do to be around and to be functional but even though i'm on medication i'm also um taking other supplements because ultimately i would love to get off these medications you know i feel like um if if you can wean yourself off something go ahead and do that and that is just the mindset that i have i don't know what's going to happen but that is the mindset mindset that i have so i'm taking coq10 as well and taking my continue taking my magnesium my fish oil well for the omegas and all of that so i'm trying to stay on top of all of that you know i'm talking to you guys and i'll see my um milk stained clothes i don't even have time to change or look cute do my makeup in my hair and nothing i just wanted to get on here get in my space i needed to be here because um I just needed a few minutes to myself because my stress level was really, really high. And I, it shows and it's something that I feel because whenever I get a little bit anxious and my stress level goes up, I can literally feel the whooshing sound in my ears. You know, my, it's called pulsatile tinnitus. I talked about this way back when, when I just started making anxiety videos. My dilemma is that I don't know if that is because of blood pressure issues but being on medication my blood pressure is controlled not great you know but it is my doctor's not complaining you know so i don't know if that's a result of that my pulsatile tinnitus or if it's just the anxiety itself okay so that's kind of like the other thing that i wanted to talk about like take a moment to really talk to you guys and let you know how i'm feeling and in this moment I have a lot of tension like i can literally feel how tight my back is so i'm literally sitting against the wall there's something supporting my lower back and um i can feel the tightness in my muscle and my head there's this pressure at the top of my head i'm showing you my armpits as well you could tell that i'm i was not prepared to record this video today at all but whatever we all have armpits and armpit hair from time to time and i'm human and you guys know me like i don't try to you know i'll just it is what it is on my channel so anyway so there's this tight um, feeling at the top of my head and sometimes there's this burning sensation but honestly if you have been feeling that symptom i promise you it is tension i already talked to my doctor about this and it's tension because and you know it's tension because if you push down on your shoulder and you let your shoulders fall back you literally feel a release like I'm feeling right now. Okay? So you feel a release. And you can work here and then. You can work, you know, do that. You feel a release. Um, something that helped me a lot with managing tension. Two things. Magnesium. Okay? Having a good magnesium supplement. And also doing trigger point um, massage therapy. That helps as well. If you press on your muscle knots. You can literally feel the release of that stress. You know, you're really stressed out too. We tend to kind of hold ourselves uptight and everything uptight. And you can see my alignment is off. Like this shoulder is a little bit higher than this one. That is because of the tension. It, I'm literally showing you how this is manifesting. Like, you know, so um, I'm probably due for an adjustment anyway. But before I even do that, I like drinking my magnesium and getting my massage and all that. And honestly, once i'm more relaxed um this becomes more aligned like it looks balanced or even so um so again if that is something you're experiencing that is just what it is it's tension it's really really scary because i got a few comments on my anxiety videos where people say you know they they would say to me i'm feeling this tightness in my head and i'm feeling this burning sensation and i'm feeling oh my gosh my back hurts and it's soreness and I feel like my head is heavy and you know I, I need to do this MRI and of course do what you need to do like if you feel like you need to do an MRI go ahead and do that I did that because I needed the confirmation that I didn't have a, a tumor and when I went to my doctor doctor lab the doctor was like if you had a tumor there were other things that you were going to experience like your speech would have been messed up you probably wouldn't have been coordinated um, hardly is it associated with headaches or being up you know having a pulling sensation and that is just because of the tension now i'm not a doctor full disclaimer of course 
if you are concerned about something definitely go get checked out that's that's what you need to do okay but i'm saying for me the tightness that i'm feeling if everything else is fine okay the tightness in my shoulder my head whatever the off balance feeling sometimes you feel like you're walking and you feel like you're off balance all of that has to do with tension okay so um just check out my previous anxiety videos and you'll see other things that um and you know these are recurring like my anxiety issues were managed without medication or anything like that and i, I pride myself on that and then now having a kid having a rough pregnancy having an abrupt end to the pregnancy having a kid in the pandemic while having another one outside like a three-year-old a lot has happened this year um for us okay and it was really really hard it's still really hard on pregnant and expecting mothers so um <laughs> other things that i've experienced so the tension the pulsatile tinnitus where you know you have the whoosh, whoosh or you feel like you can hear your heartbeat in your your ear um i had like on and off tingling sensations as well um and that was before delivery okay because i had a c-section um this time around again and i know okay in my case i got a spinal that can affect my nerves so i don't want i don't want to confuse um, the aftermath of my c-section with um, just the anxiety symptoms okay if, if that makes sense so um, there were these uh, tingling sensations as well in my my fingers and something that I'm kind of still working around is my breathing like the shortness of breath when I get really stressed out it's like I cannot control I don't have much control of my breathing so I have to stop what I'm doing and be very intentional about my breathing it's called diaphragmatic breathing so i have to let my stomach expand and literally push the air out and you know i'm no expert on these things i too had to go to other youtube channels to learn how to manage these things um, but it can be pretty darn scary scary if it's something that is new to you but honestly um you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now. When someone asks me or people ask me in general how I'm feeling, my word is heavy. You know, things feel heavy right now. There is this pandemic going on. Um, I know I'm high risk. I have a preemie that is, she's also high risk because she's a preemie and there are things going on and all of that. And, you know, I don't want this virus, regardless of what people think, whether it's a conspiracy, blah, blah, blah. I'm not like that. I'm a, I'm a woman who believes in the science if you know my background i'm a chemistry teacher and i really am for the science and i try to look at things for what they are um i know people who got sick with covid and it's not very funny and i don't think i want to be in that situation at all you know i always run through my head if i were to get sick what happens to my household you know who's taking care of the preemie yes i have a husband i have you know i have that but then it does disrupt the household you know, so I don't want to be away from my children um, for any length of time. I've been there, done that when I had my unexpected stay in the hospital this time around um, due to my preeclampsia. So, you know, guys, just it's 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 a really strange, stressful time in the world right now. Um, my anxiety is back. OK, I'm talking to you openly about it. I'm trying to manage it as best as I can. I'm going back to my old videos to see the things that helped the most because I really do have to keep it together, okay, um, for all the right reasons. And I don't want you guys to dismiss what you're feeling. If, you, Of course, if you feel like you need to go see a professional, do that and get confirmation that something more isn't going on with you. But for the most part, ringing the S, the, ten, the, the pulsatile tinnitus, the tension, the tightness in your shoulders and your back, the, 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 the tightness in your head, that burning sensation on top of your head, um, the shortness of breath. Um, what else? Just, you know, these are the big ones. These are the big ones. Um, the kind of lightheaded feeling kind of thing. And I know it's not my blood pressure being too low because I do take my readings, but that all of those things are due to the anxiety. And of course, people's anxieties, or you know the anxiety is up because of what's going on around us in the world so it's understood but with that said um, if you are experiencing these symptoms really do try to manage them I have a lot of helpful videos on YouTube um, help yourself you know it's out there it's free help yourself 
and let me know what else you want me to talk about regarding this mental state and the emotional things so do you want me to talk about stresses of being a new mom do you want me to talk about just stresses in general do you want me to talk about um specific anxiety symptoms do you want me to elaborate on the, the tension because I, I can talk a book about that do you want me to talk about um the ringing in the ears and what helps and um all of that do you want me to talk about breathing and i had one panic attack that i can talk about and how i overcame that and not allow that to happen again tell me what you want me to talk about but i wanted to jump on here and give you guys some some insight and also use this as a therapy because talking about it really helped i was really having a rough time moments ago and i just needed some space um it is nothing in my house so i just I think I went on Facebook and um, I saw a really bad story and my anxiety just kind of kicked up a notch. And then from there, I became very short with Abony. Um, and so, but, you know, I'm human, things happen. But I appreciate you guys looking on and listening. And of course, let me be vulnerable. Oh, go over to Abony's channel. You know, her channel is about education and learning and fun. Support her. You know, you guys love seeing things with Abony on Instagram and all that, but one thing you can do to help her and encourage us is to go over and support her channel, Abony's Activities. I'll link that below. All right, guys, until next time, peace.